These days it can seem like scientists and researchers are making mind-blowing discoveries each and every minute. From the outer reaches of space to our long-forgotten past, we are only starting to scratch the surface of what we can potentially uncover. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at what dried up lakes can reveal. Dried Up Lake Reveals a Forgotten Oregon Town In the 1950s, the village of Old Detroit was deserted and sunk in a reservoir. The West's epic drought, which has lasted more than four years, has just revealed a surprise in northern Oregon. The abandoned village of Old Detroit has resurfaced beneath Detroit Lake, which had record low water levels in 2015. Marion County Sheriff's deputy Dave Zahn was travelling along the reservoir in October when he came across an 1870s wagon partially immersed in the muck. Detroit Lake was 143 feet below capacity at the time. The wagon remained in perfect condition due to the low oxygen levels at the lake's bottom. According to United States Forest Service archaeologist Cara Kelly of the Statesman Journal, the wagon was probably damaged more in the weeks it was on land than it had been underwater for decades. The wagon, as well as an adjacent concrete octagonal pit that has yet to be identified, have now fallen underneath Detroit Lake after recent rainstorms raised the water levels. To prevent plundering and destruction, the Marion County Sheriff's Department and the nearby ranger station opted to keep the archaeological site hidden until water levels rose again. Receding water levels have also lately revealed a 400-year-old chapel in Mexico. In 1952, the 200-person village of Old Detroit was abandoned to make way for the construction of a new dam that would flood the area, about an hour east of Salem, and create the Detroit Lake Reservoir. Parts of the historic town became visible above the water every winter when the spillways of the Detroit Dam are opened to make place for spring runoff. However, the wagon has never been found before, and water levels have not been as low as they were in 2015 since 1969. It could be decades before the water levels in Detroit Lake drop to that low again, which is precisely what Zahn and the Forest Service want. Bolivia's second largest lake dries up due to climate change, displacing thousands of people. Bolivia's second largest lake has vanished, displacing hundreds if not thousands of people who rely on it for survival. Lake Pupo was officially declared evaporated, a sign of climate change, according to scientists. The lake, which is located more than 12,000 feet above sea level on the country's Andean plains, had previously dried up but has since rebounded to a size twice that of Los Angeles. However, specialists believe that this time recuperation is no longer possible. The vanished lake is a picture of the future of climate change, according to Dirk Hoffman, a German glaciologist examining how rising temperatures from the use of fossil fuels have exacerbated glacier melting in the country. Local environmental groups accuse the government of the shallow saline lakes of apparition, claiming that the government mismanaged water resources and disregarded pollution caused by tin mining upstream. They charged Huanuni, the country's largest tin mine with dumping contaminated garbage into Lake Pu Po's tributaries. Something could have been done to avert the calamity, said Angel Flores, the chairman of a residence group that tried to save Pu Po. While El Nino-driven droughts also plagued Lake Pu Po for millennia, its fragile ecosystem has been subjected to unprecedented stress in the last three decades. Temperatures have risen by around one degree Celsius, and mining activity has reduced the flow of streams, causing sediment to accumulate. Over the last three years, the drought has pushed more than 100 families to abandon the little lakeside community of Antavi, reducing the population. Former inhabitant Juvenal Gutierrez claimed the community has no future. At least 3,250 people have received humanitarian relief, according to the local government's office. According to the report, Lake Pupo is currently only 2% of its former water level, and 75 species of birds have already vanished from the area. Drying Lake Chad Basin gives rise to crisis 
Food insecurity, hostilities, violence, relocation, and the consequences of climate change all add to these difficulties. In 2019, Phoebe Musa, aged 20, recalls the day five years ago when Boko Haram extremists raided her community of Gwoza in Borno State, northeast Nigeria. They attacked everyone they could see on horseback, motorbikes, and military vehicles. They set fire to scores of homesteads amid bursts of gunfire. Ms. Musa was kidnapped from her home, blindfolded and hauled deep into the neighboring Sambiza forest, where she remained until she was rescued early in 2019 by the Nigerian military. Ms. Musa told Africa Renewal in an interview at the Darumi camp for internally displaced persons in Nigeria's capital, Abuja, that she was forcibly married to three men at different times, resulting in three children. She claimed that her two elder children had perished from malnutrition in the jungle while her last-born child was strapped to her back. Ms. Musa's plight is emblematic of the deteriorating humanitarian situation in the Lake Chad Basin. According to the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, almost 10 million people living there require humanitarian help. Thousands of IDPs are being housed in several camps across the region. According to the UN agency, who need proper housing, food, water, and sanitation. It is no longer breaking news that Lake Chad, once one of Africa's greatest freshwater basins and a source of livelihood for over 30 million people, is rapidly disappearing. What is new is the basin's unique and complex humanitarian catastrophe, which is one of the worst in the world. As a result of the widespread violence, 10.7 million people in the Lake Chad region require immediate assistance. The majority of these individuals were already dealing with high poverty rates, insufficient access to basic services such as education and healthcare, and the severe effects of climate change. Currently, 2.3 million people are displaced across the region, over 5 million people are struggling to find enough food to eat, and half a million children are suffering from severe acute malnutrition said UN Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohamed at a high-level event on the humanitarian situation in the region. Lake Chad is a lake in northern Central Africa that is shared by four countries – Chad, Nigeria, Niger and Cameroon. However, the basin of Lake Chad, which occupies over 8% of the continent, is divided into seven countries – Algeria, Cameroon, Central African Republic, Chad, Libya, Niger and Nigeria. Due to usage and climate change effects, the water body has shrunk by 90% since the 1960s. As livelihoods were lost, the conflict between herders and farmers grew more widespread. Families that relied on the lake began to migrate in search of water to other places. At a press conference in New York on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly in September 2019, President Bihari expressed concern about the evaporating lake. The population of Lake Chad is expanding while the lake is diminishing. It's a difficult scenario. President Buhari stated, with less land and less rainfall, there are very specific difficulties for the country. According to Deputy Secretary General Mohamed, the UN's involvement in the Lake Chad Basin has taken the shape of humanitarian relief, development assistance, human rights, justice and law enforcement, as well as preventing and combating terrorism. The UN has co-hosted two international donor conferences in the last two years. The first in Oslo, where donors pledged $672 million in emergency aid, and the second in Berlin, where donors announced $2.17 billion in support of activities in Cameroon, Chad, Niger and Nigeria, including $467 million in concessional loans. The major organization in charge of IDP's care in Nigeria the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons argues that IDP's long-term alternatives are to return home or to live in host communities. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.